wish your car could do that. Welcome to Hazard County. Hey. Today I'm standing next to one badass muscle car legend, the 1969 Dodge Charger. As you can immediately see, this has been modified to replicate the car that was popularized by the Dukes of Hazard, And on that show, this was known as the General. This is a spitting image of what was on the show, including the front push bars, CB radio with antenna, decals, as well as the Dixie horn. The only thing missing are the sealed doors, which I don't entirely mind because I know I throw my back out climbing in and out of this thing. The Charger was derived from the fifth generation Dodge Coronet. While it wasn't a milestone for the company, or for muscle cars in general, it did have its place among the giants that filled the automotive landscape at that time. With the death of the muscle car just around the corner, the Charger with its six foot wide stance and 17 foot long obvious presence managed to squeeze itself into history just before it all went belly up. And belly up it went. A few years after this Charger was released, muscle cars were being phased out due to higher insurance premiums, stricter emission laws, and higher gas prices. In a car that you could almost literally watch the gas gauge fall in real time, this was not the answer to those problems. The want for a machine like this dwindled quickly, and as I heard from people who lived through the 60s, they say you couldn't give this car away back then if you tried. It's funny how that's definitely not the case these days. The Dukes of Hazard helped cement this 69 Charger into history by destroying at least one on every episode. The stunts and maneuvers they did were nothing short of spectacular, with the special effects mainly consisting of a madman behind the wheel willing to get this car airborne. It's estimated a good 300 General Lees were destroyed, with only about 17 still standing. Here you can actually see the car crumble under the pressure of the landing, not to mention the stuntman taking quite the beating. Eventually they had trouble finding chargers to destroy, so the show's producers resorted to leaving notes on cars in parking lots, asking strangers to buy them. Towards the end of the series, they ended up using miniatures and old footage to create new jumps in some instances. As much as fans loved Bo, Luke, and Daisy Duke, the real star was the car. I happened to meet one of those fans and had the pleasure of being invited to his garage. The owner, Leslie, grew up in Ireland and since he was five, he would religiously watch the show with his dream of owning a General one day. He built this garage around the car with the walls and shelves littered with memorabilia. Original styled rims are on hand for when he visits car shows which he does quite often. Leslie made his way to Duke Fest in 2004, a festival that honors the Dukes of Hazard and the Charger by jumping yet another General Lee. Him and his replica were in the charge of General Lee's, making his way around the oval with a bunch of other owners. It's quite the sight when you consider the relative rarity of the car itself. Leslie even managed to make it onto the DVD extras. I'm from Leeds, I'm in Ireland. Lynn, she's from Dublin in Ireland. As good as this car looks, do not mistake it for a garage queen. He uses this car to its full potential every single time he gets behind the wheel. And when he gets together with his friend Matt and his Trans Am, all hell breaks loose. Leslie's happiness with his build is apparent, and why he's happy is equally apparent. He built the car he wanted. Considering how this generation Charger wasn't exactly elegant around the bends, he put an emphasis on stability and handling with Hotchkiss subframe connectors and thicker Hotchkiss sway bars front and back. To give it a pro touring feel, it's been dropped an additional two inches. Deep dish rims echoing the style of the stock rims give this a sleeker look and more of a contact patch with the road. All of this virtually eliminates the boat feeling that these were known for. Under the hood, he was looking for something rock solid. So Leslie went to Jerry Stein, a famous NHRA drag racer from back in the day who built a beautiful 440 big block board 30 over with aluminum heads, ported and polished. A 750 four barrel carb 
MSD ignition with TTI headers going into a Magnaflow exhaust topped it all off. The auto tranny was thrown out and a Tremec TKO 600 five speed with a hydraulic clutch was thrown in going into a 391 sure grip rear end. This charger had no interior when Leslie received it, so he threw in updated electric seats reupholstered to match the original look with a grand steering wheel. A custom console with Mopar gauges give this old school beast a touch of modern, and since he's quite the handyman, he managed to fashion his own pistol grip shift knob from scratch. To finalize his build, if you flip down the driver's side sun visor, you'll see that the entire cast from the Dukes of Hazard signed this car for Leslie. For him, this is the ultimate finishing touch to his dream car. Once he was done with that, he built his son Luke a mini General Lee replica too, because why not? And you better believe he was the coolest kid in school showing up to his first day of pre-K in a machine like this. After discussing his build and getting to know him for a bit, Leslie handed me the keys and gave me the chance to enjoy his creation. And with something like this, all you can do is enjoy it. I like this, this is like a house key. You can just shove a butter knife in here and turn this thing on. Starting it is one of my favorite things, just because that sound you get. Just the reminder of what you're in. You immediately feel like the coolest dude on the block. And it's easy to drive, man. Everything just feels perfect. The only thing that is really throwing me for a loop right now is the lack of seatbelt. I am uh, I'm a bit of a safety junkie. One of my favorite things about these old school cars is just the inputs. Just this, this heavy, beefy gas pedal. This gas pedal feels like it's a thousand pounds. You get out of my way, I got 500 horsepower. I want to try it out. I can't get enough of this audio. The soundtrack that this thing puts out is mesmerizing. The Magnaflow exhaust gives it a robust sound and feeling, but at the same time, you let your foot back, you chill at 2,000 RPMs at 65 on the highway, and it's a nice relaxing ride. I really do feel like I'm just chilling right now. And you know, you just pull it down a gear, and not only you, but everybody around you knows you're awesome. And the torque is very easy to set on. I have no problem making my way around traffic. The thing I don't love is how people chase you down. Like this Audi behind me is getting a little bit aggressive. As much as I like the attention, I don't love the opportunity for him to sideswipe me because he's a little too excited. Because of the stiffening up he did, the body doesn't sway. The body doesn't have that uneasy feel to it. But I do like how even as big as this thing is, taking it around a tight road and tight corners like this on a tight little street, it's not intimidating, it's not impossible. This thing is as drivable as anything else. And I'm absolutely in love with the handling on this thing. It might be because where my expectations were and what the fact of the matter is. The ability to throw it around, the ability to enjoy such a large car. I mean, six feet wide and 17 feet long. That's no joke. I mean, I come around these, these corners extremely fast in my little Japanese cars. I'm not exactly taking it easy. I am in the sense that it's not my car, but I'm not in the sense that I trust where I am on the road and I trust what this thing will do when I turn the wheel. That's a lot to say for a big car like this. That's a lot. At the same time, when I come down a tight street like this, I'm thinking you're not going to fit past me. Come on, asshole. The problem with something like this, you can be the best driver in the world. I guarantee you, it's not going to be you that takes it away from you. It's going to be some idiot who's not paying attention, who's texting. I guess the only problem with the Dixie Horn is you can't honk to tell people to get out of your way. It just sounds like you're telling them you're having a good time. This engine loves being opened up. It enjoys it as much as the driver. Uh oh, there's a merge. You know how happy I get to merge onto parkways. Let these guys go a little bit, because then all you're going to do is you're going to press that large pedal on the right just a little bit. This mirror, this mirror is what we like to call and useless. You're just gonna give it a little squeeze of your foot and then everything else comes into play. It's actually really hard to floor it because of the weight of the gas pedal. 
gas pedal is so heavy. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to these puny little modern gas pedals. The amount of metal hanging off of this thing on both sides, you get an extra foot alone, just from, in a sense, pointless width, just for the design of the car. And that is one thing I absolutely love because they threw practicality out the window and they did it in the best way possible. Because then you end up with this. The fact that this existed is something that makes me so happy as a car enthusiast. The amount of camaraderie you get from people on the road, the amount of looks, the amount of smiles, the amount of thumbs ups. That's reason enough alone to build a car like this. And then you drive it and it just plants that fact so much deeper in that you built the right car. You know that Altec boy is gonna get himself in trouble driving this way. If the cops ever learn to keep up with him, that is. The day I spent with this General Lee shot this right to the top of the most memorable and funnest cars I've ever driven. The amount of attention it drew didn't get old within the time I had it. It's a sight to see on the road and everyone around you reminds you of that. This easily attracts other car enthusiasts too. When Leslie and I were bouncing around town, a random guy who was also a huge Dukes fan smiled ear to ear when he saw us pull up. He then ran back to his house and brought out his toy to show it off to us. We quickly made another friend who was excited to engage in a conversation about how much money he dumped into what makes him happy. As awesome as this car is to look at, nothing beats watching Leslie beat the hell out of the machine he built. And as he'll tell you, tires were meant for melting. Both Leslie and Matt are the very definition of cool car guys. Not only do they use these like they're easily replaceable, they're an absolute riot when they're together. To see that Trans Am in action, check out my earlier video. If you enjoyed what you watched here, like and subscribe. If not, shoot me some feedback. But as always, thanks for watching. These are the bloops. These are the bloops, baby. God damn it. <laughs> I, I, I'm shocked every time I look at the whole thing. <laughs> Isn't that the greatest? That's the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen. This is amazing. <laughs>